I'm Misty. And I'm Ike. For the next 15 minutes, we're going to debate pop culture. My background's in music. My background's in film. I know the topics beforehand. And I don't. We check the internet for the facts. And ruin it with opinions. From pop rocks in your lunchbox. To Happy Meal toys and swatch clocks. Hello, everyone. Oh, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, 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 yeah. Episode 62. Good morning, friends. Good morning, friend. Friend? Hello. Hello. <laughs> what, <laughs> what, what do you want to do today for the 62nd time? I'm going to ruin stuff. Let's ruin it. Yep. It's uh, presidential week. It is presidential week. Leading up to the... Uh, dun, 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 Oh, wait, that's the A-team. I'll take it. <laughs> I will take it. If every time you saw or thought of the president, you heard the A team, and then I'm if, into that. If oh man, if the president ended every single one of his speeches, like I love it when a plan comes together. <laughs> or if the president was like B A, and he's like, B-A-Baracus. I don't drink no milk, fool. The the but, milk. I mean, wasn't Terry Crews kind of like that in Idiocracy? Yeah, he's kind of like that a little. A little bit. He's a little B A. Yeah, Mountain Dew Camacho. President you know, you know what B.A. Camacho. stood for? Badass. Yeah. Badass Baracus. Badass Baracus. I remember that. Wow, I just went deep deep diving back into my A-team history. Yeah, you just got Dang. yourself off the B-squad right onto the A-team. Right? <laughs> so dumb. I used that to wasn't watch, funny. wasn't funny. I used to watch the A-team and the Knight Rider back to back. Oh, dude. Yeah. Are we about to change topics for the day? No. Oh. Because I've got a really good one for today. Can we do um, the A-Team versus Knight Rider? (gasps) Yes. Coming up? Absolutely we can. 100%. Um, But do you want to know what we're going to talk about today? Ding, 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 ding. Uh, I do want to know. Sorry, I'm blowing up for this other thing. Whatever, Hollywood. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine, Hollywood. What's up? What are we talking about today? The Secret Service. What? Stuff that you don't know about the Secret Service. All right, let's meow. Okay. Okay. Um, I need to tell you this. Okay. Oh when, my gosh, you're gonna start. Yes. I love this. I love the Secret Service more than like any other job mm-hmm. in the world. When I was a kid, I didn't want to be the president. I wanted to be the Secret Service guy. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I wanted to be a sniper, so you and I would have been at like opposite ends of the spectrum. Like a bad sniper trying to get to the president. Because I specifically... I wanted to be a hitman. That's what I used to tell people Oh, my kid. God. I thought the best part of being in the Secret Service was the counter-sniper unit. You and I literally would have Dude. been like arch nemesis. Yes. We would have been like when uh, those snipers go off in that war movie and they shoot each other through the yeah. scopes. Yeah. Wow. When I was in college, my favorite movie, and I probably have watched it, 50 times. Mm-hmm. Um, Gross Point Blank. Okay. Which is about Hitman as John Cusack in yeah. it. Yeah. And he has this line in it right before he gets ready to kill somebody. Basically, it's about Hitmen that are kind of having an existential crisis. Right. I love that kind of stuff. <laughs> right. And he has this line and he says, you know, the one thing that makes me able to sleep at night is that if I'm here, you did something to bring me here. Right. And that to me, like, represented in my brain... Why I wanted to be a hitman when I was a kid. Yeah. <laughs> like, put it all together. Man. I was like, you look at them as the bad guys, but in all honesty, m- sometimes they're not really the bad guy. Yeah. We should do an episode from yeah. um, from a, a sniper range <gasps> with a sniper instructor. It's like bonus Patreon content. Dude, that I am in. Yeah. 100%. And see who can shoot the best. 100%. Yeah. So you wanted to be in the Secret Service. Yeah. I wanted to be a sniper. Yeah. The hitman. Oh, we should write a movie about two roommates. <laughs> <laughs> One is one's a hitman, and one because they always have like the good, the good just cop, bad odd couple. Just steal that name. Yeah, and yeah, then okay. but they've never ever put like the good guy and the bad guy in the same apartment. No, not really. Except okay, I take that back. Mister and Missus Smith. They little were, bit. They were both. Bit. And then the Oceans one, the second Oceans movie, Brad mm-hmm. Pitt and Catherine Zeta Jones were opposite ends of the spectrum. Hmm. But they were lovers. In the Oceans movies? Yeah, the one that takes place in Europe. Where oh, they're not my chasing fave. Chasing the... Yeah. It's not my fave, but yeah. same scenario. Um, okay. Anyways, let's Secret. talk about the Secret Service. Let's do it. Because it's your your favorite thing to talk about. When was <laughs> the Secret I, Service created? Uh, 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 yes, Misty. 
The Secret Service was created the day that Abraham Lincoln was assassinated. He created the Secret Service that day before he got shot. Shut up. I'm not even kidding. What? I'm not kidding. Wow. The 16th president of the U.S. 1865, he created the Secret Service. On the advice of Treasury uh, Se- yeah. Secretary of the Treasury Hugh McCulloch, President Lincoln established a commission to stop this rapidly growing problem that was destroying the nation's economy. Counterfeit. Wow. They, they created it to stop counterfeit money. That is what I was going to tell you earlier when I didn't know we were talking oh. about Secret Service. Okay, tell okay, tell tell the tell the listeners, tell the fans, tell Uh-oh. the friends. So uh, when I cool. used to in North Carolina, when I used to work in real estate, uh, there was a kid that I used to work across the street from Duke, and they were all like princes and princesses. And this one kid was making fake IDs. Oh, he was counterfeiting yeah. fake IDs and fake passports, and the Secret Service rolled up like twenty deep in like three or four SUVs. What? And they yanked him out by his ear, and no one ever saw him again. So counterfeit, that's like the one thing that it, it supersedes, like, local and federal law. That's it. You're getting the Secret you Service. straight to, You're like... Gonna get, bring all your guys. Holy shit, dude. Yeah. Don't make fake IDs. You're getting Secret dude, I Service. I gotta close down that printing press at home. Yeah. Just kidding. We don't have the plates. Mm. <laughs> okay, so... um. Initially, when the Secret Service started, it was counterfeiting, and that did not, their role didn't expand until after presidents started being attacked. Okay. So you would have thought that, you know, he, Abraham Lincoln signs off on the Secret Service, and then he gets shot that night. You would think that instantly they would do, like, you know, a little bit of a pivot Mm -hmm. and be like, hey, we need to start protecting the presidents. Yep. So that was in what, 1865, I said? Correct. So. The expansion of their duties didn't actually start until 1901 when oh. William McKinley um, was, he was assassinated. Well, yes, uh, they did me, kill him. Allow right? me to retort. Okay. According to the secretservice.gov about slash history slash events, mm-hmm. 1865, you're absolutely correct. 1867, Secret Service responsibilities broadened to include detecting persons perpetrating frauds against the government. Okay. This appropriation resulted in the investigation into the Ku Klux Klan, non-conforming distillers, smugglers, mail robbers, land frauds, and a number of other infractions against federal laws. And then in 1870, the Secret Service headquarters was relocated for, uh, from Washington, D.C. to New York City. Oh. That's interesting. That's very interesting. The headquarters returned to any- Washington four years later. Interesting. So I wonder why. 1870 we, to 1874. I mean, New York was a much bigger city than D.C. at the time. Yeah, but all of the government things took place in, in D.C. Yeah, that's why they took it back. But why? I wonder why they moved it. What the point of moving it to New York City? If that president was more based in New York City than in D.C.? or I don't know. Interesting. In 1874, the first Secret Service Commission book was issued. Okay. okay. In 1877, Congress passed legislation prohibiting the counterfeiting of any coin, gold, or silver bar. So they were already operating for 13 years trying to wow. catch counterfeiters before it was technically illegal on the books. Right. That's weird. I got the whole timeline here. You want me I, to keep going? Uh, well, I just uh, I just read something kind of interesting that it took until 1968 um, when Robert F. Kennedy was shot as a presidential candidate mm-hmm. for them to start protecting um, presidential and vice presidential candidates as well. So oh. almost 1970, close to. And does that before it, they were like, oh, these people are probably right. as much in danger as the current president. And does that president. include, or does it only start when you get your party's nominee? Like when there's when they're still debating on the opposite side, and there's like 20 people running. No, I think it's the actual candidate. Once you're the the party's confirmed, candidate, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, because I think at that point, once you become the party's candidate, isn't that when you have access to classified information? I don't. I don't think you get the super good stuff until you're. You don't in get office. the super good stuff, but you do have a, a higher um, security clearance as a candidate, as the nominee, the actual candidate. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wonder how far it trickles down. That so was, it was kind of a big deal a few years ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. How far does Secret Service protection trickle down? So it's the president, it's and okay. then the vice president. Right? Does the Speaker of the House get some Secret Service? Do senators get Secret Service? 
Um, I don't think so. I, I don't. I think of a, it really just um, applies to the actual president and vice president, right? And their families, of course. Protection is authorized by the DHS secretary after consultation with the Congressional Advisory Committee. The Congressional Advisory Committee includes Speaker of the House, House Minority Leader, Senate Majority Leader, Senate Minority Leader, <coughs> and one additional member selected by the others. Interesting. Okay. So they all. So kinda, basically, all the people that would end up in the bunker. Um. Well, it's it, that's who authorizes the protection. So they get to oh, choose who gets it. Gotcha. This is. Yeah, but do they get to choose like, themselves? That's weird. I would. So would I. Anybody would. It's crazy yeah. not to. Hmm. Do you know that only one member of the Secret Service has ever died protecting the president? I did not know that. Yeah. <clears throat> um, in 1950, two um, Puerto Rican nationalists stormed the house that President Harry Truman was living in while there were renovations going on at the White House. And in their attempt to assassinate Truman, they shot Private Leslie Caulfield, a member of the Secret Service, three times. Before he died, he returned fire, shooting one of the would-be assassins in the head. Wow. Man, that's like the ultimate, <clears throat> right? Yeah. You're just like, Some I ain't going out like this, and neither is really. neither's Harry Truman. That's right. Like, I'm going to lay here, th shot three times, and die, but I'm going to make sure I get my final shot off. Do you know That's how? Impressive. Do you know how long presidents are protected after they're out of office? Isn't it like twenty years? In 1965, Congress authorized the Secret Service, Public Law 89-186, to protect a former president and his or her spouse during their lifetime unless they decline protection. Okay, so their whole lifetime. Yeah, I, like I also that. I don't know if this is true, and I, I think like it that. would state it on this website, but I think once you become the president, you're not allowed to drive anymore ever again. Ew, I would not like that very much. Yeah. I like driving. Did you ever see um, Comedians in Cars? Not that I would ever want to be president. With Jerry Seinfeld? I love it. Absolutely. Did you see the Obama episode? Yeah. They just drove it's around the, <laughs> the front. It's epic. It was it, like just in circles. Yeah, there's little guys so jogging, like Secret yeah. Service jogging behind the car. So great. Oh, so man. So good. So fun. That's a, that's a thing a president should do. Like little fun it's stuff to absolutely. entertain the people. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Um, do you know... Another interesting fact that I think you'll really like. The FBI, mm -hmm. the CIA, and the NSA have all at one point or another been infiltrated by spies. What? The Secret Service has never had a spy or a traitor in their ranks. Never. How do we know that? That got caught. They, Well, something, the, I mean, the purpose of a spy is to cause something to happen, to gather information to cause something to happen. Yeah. They've never uncovered any Secret Service member being a spy or a traitor. I wonder what um, the recruiting process is. Like, what do you have to do? I don't know. Look it up. I'm going to. How to become a Secret Service person. Yeah, that would be fun. How to become. I think they're it's all ex-Navy SEALs and stuff, right? I don't know. I'm very curious. I, I mean, I know this is taking it like in a, in a dark, a dark turn. Which president has had the most threats on them? Oh, but we could look that up, too. Yeah. Uh, oh, here are the special agent Secret Service requirements. Apply now. You can apply online at uh, Secret Service. Let's do Service. it when we're done with this. Oh, my God. Let's apply to be in the Secret Service. Sorry, you guys. We can't entertain you for 15 minutes a day any longer. We've become <laughs> Secret, Secret Service Services <laughs> members. Uh, the job oh of special goodness. agent offers qualified men and women a challenging and fulfilling career. The U.S. Secret Service results uh, recruits personnel of the highest caliber to carry out its integrated missions of investigation and protection. While the executive protection mission is known worldwide, the U.S. Secret Service's investigative mission continues to grow due to developments in technology. Special agents investigate violations of laws relating to financial crimes, such as credit card and access device fraud, as well as computer-based attacks on the nation's banking and telecommunications. In the field of protection, Secret Service special agents develop and implement innovative strategies to mitigate threats to our nation's leaders. Do you think that we could be pop culture secret service people? We could investigate threats. Yeah. I think we should have worn. Based in pop culture. We should have worn suits for this one. We should have oh. with earpieces instead of headphones. I definitely have earpieces. I definitely do too because we <laughs> use them out on the road. And we do too on film sets. And yeah. I 100%. Oh, here's the thing that ties into pop culture. They always 
when they film Secret Service in movies, they always make them talk in the walkie wrong. Uh, yeah, they do. There's, they nothing, totally, there's in nothing in the sleeve. Nothing. You have to nothing. hit a button. Yes, so what it's they, this. What it's they actually this. do is they run the, the cable down their arm, yeah. and it's clipped to the inside. Yeah. So if you squeeze right there, it'll activate right. the button, and you can talk it to your hand. Yes, but you're not talking into your but wrist. But you're not doing this. And I have told so many actors that, and they're like, no, nah, man, I've seen it. I've no, seen it you're movies. doing it wrong. No, you gotta you gotta squeeze the wrong. button and talk like, oh, it just drives me nuts. Um, I clip mine here. Yeah, mine always goes right here. I run it up my shirt. Yeah, and then if I, I want to talk, the back and over. Because special it's ops, they have a thing that goes around their yes. neck, and then they just push a button, and it hears yeah. the vibration of their vocal yeah, which cords. Is really weird. So I just keep mine right here, and, yeah. I, and I use it like those guys that me smoke too, cigarettes. Me too, like a Drake. Yeah, <laughs> like a Drake. Yeah. Um. Okay. I don't want to run out of time. I don't so, think we ever will. Okay. <clears throat> code names. Ooh. The Secret Service gets to use code names for the presidents. So, John and Jackie Kennedy were known as Lancer and Lace. Ronald and Nancy Reagan went by Rawhide and Rainbow. <laughs> Do they? Does the president pick or does the Secret the Service? Secret Service. Wow. They call the Pentagon Calico and the White House is Castle. Do they change them ever? Probably. I mean, somebody finds out. I mean, Castle's a little on the nose for the White House, don't you think? <laughs> well, I mean, what else are you going to call it? I the shack? What... Oh, that's funny. <laughs> that actually the, would be really funny. The apartment. Funny. I think the apartment, the apartment would be, would be really I wonder what funny. they call NORAD. Let's look that up. Ooh, good one. NORAD is in Colorado, you guys. It is. Under, underneath. And there's a, we learned, there's a tunnel that goes to the Denver International Airport. I bet I'm going to be on we some. We learned kind of, that during Space Week. I'm going to be on some kind of uh, watch list. For, oh, absolutely! Both of us are after this. It's uh, uh, North American Aerospace Defense Command, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I uh, don't know what its secret name is. <laughs> Santa sleigh. That would be really funny. It's the Cheyenne. Well, you know, Mountain you can Complex. every Christmas you can track Santa. NORAD well, offers Santa tracking. NORAD is the one that offers it. It's pretty cute. That actually. is cute. Yeah. Oh, oh I can't see, find I it. See, I knew we'd run out of time. Uh, if you're a... <sighs> slaps. slaps. If you're an internet sleuth and a Secret Service agent of your own, and you know the NORAD name for yeah. the Secret Service NORAD name, leave a comment and tell us what it is. Um, this was one of my favorites. This was fun. Yeah. I hope you've been educated. I feel like we should do a whole like CIA, <laughs> FBI. Oh, counterterrorism, counter homeland security. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we could do NSA, NSA, all of it. CIA, DEA, the Secret Service. We could do a whole week. We really could. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna do it. It would be really fun. Yeah. Yeah. We'll do it on your birthday. Oh, okay. Oh wait. Tomorrow's my birthday. Uh huh. No, it's not. No. Last week was my birthday. No. What is my birthday? I, I'm, I'm going to cut. Uh, it was on. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know what day today is. Um, it's today. It's this episode. No, we were supposed to do birthdays that were that have the same as mine. But we got to do something you were super into. We got to do the Secret Service. How do I not know that it's my birthday? Because we're recording this. No, we're not. Now on your birthday. Happy birthday to me. Happy I'm not going to sing the whole thing. Happy birthday to Isaac. Thanks, everybody. Happy birthday to Isaac. As my birthday present, please sign up for our Patreon. Patreon birthday times. <laughs> All right. Bye, everybody. Bye.